I am at the Hungry Hollow for a bit of fossil collecting today. Uh, I'm on the riverside because you uh, uh, you can only get into the pits during club trips, so the pits are off limits when it's not uh, when the clubs aren't here or when the club trip isn't organized. So, but you can still gain access to the riverside, and this is on the right side of the river. So the main pits are on the left side of the river. So you'd go to if you were going to the uh, the the smaller pit that's on the right side of the river. Before that, you basically just there's a bunch of walking trails at, or trails down the, to the riverside because people like to fish this area. You just take one of those trails down and then you kind of walk up the river a bit and you get to this large exposed clay bank. You can see there's the matrix, the matrix rock, like the sandstone and the the dolomitic or not sandstone is probably limestone, like heavily degraded limestone. And already, I've just found a handful of uh, horn corals. Maybe I'll take one or two of these. Most of these seem kind of damaged and cruddy. I also found a little piece of pyrotized crinoid section. But I'm just going to keep poking around, see if I can find anything really interesting. If I do, I will definitely show you guys. Uh, this is my first time in this section. Heard of it from other collectors and... Some of them have said they've had good luck here, so hopefully I do have some good luck today and I find some interesting stuff, and I'll definitely show you if I do. It's got, seems to be some type of uh, brown, kind of bulbous, I want to say a bryozoan. I'm just trying to get it loose. Oops. Okay, so it's on some type of Covering some type of coral. Okay. Thought it was interesting or it was more interesting than it actually was. But I'm just on top of the section right above where it was finding where I found the three trilobite parts. I'm just sifting through this area to see if this is like the source zone or if the source zone is farther up. We'll have to figure it out. <laughs> I have this nice, uh, what I believe is a brachiopod on Matrix, and I'm just using my trowel to kind of move the clay out of the way. That's one thing I would recommend taking is some type of implement to kind of dig the clay out so that you can take your fossil specimens out without damaging them. And sometimes they're pretty fragile, and so what you what you can do is actually use the play, clay to stabilize it, kind of. So you actually take the clay that it's stuck to back home, so that you can stabilize it better when you get back at home. But this one's on matrix, so it's pretty good. But that looks like to be a pretty complete uh, brachiopod on matrix. Nice little find. So far, everything that I found of semi-interest, I've just thrown in my Ziploc bag. But I've got a couple pieces here that I thought I'd just quickly show you. Got kind of like two masses of a bunch of like different uh, fossils and stuff. I think this might be a kind of a, a uh, what is it called, a favocyte. Like a flat favocyte with a bunch of other stuff attached to it. And then I've got um, what I think is a bryozone. A pretty big section of a bryozone. But I want to clean these pieces off and see if there are any... any other interesting stuff, but I did find this lovely little nice brachiopod that doesn't seem to have any damage, so I'm quite happy about that. That'll probably go home with me. Do you guys see what I can see? I'll give you guys this, just a second to try and figure it out. Maybe pause the video and put your guesses below what I'm looking at. I'll give you guys a couple seconds to get your guesses in, then I'll show you. Fortunately, it's not whole, but it is a whole head. Check this out. It's the head of a trilobite. Pretty decent sized one. It's got the nose, it's got the eye, both eyes. I don't know if the cheek is under there. It's partially covered. That is already a pretty awesome find for today. Look at that thing. That's a pretty decent sized trilobite. It's probably the biggest uh, trilobite I found so far because I've never found a whole one. I've been gifted a couple that are almost 100% whole or 100% whole, but I've never found one personally that's whole, but this is the biggest uh, so far. 
even though it's not whole. Pretty happy with that. That already makes the day. I came up here because I saw this pretty intact uh, large horn coral. But then, just right above in this section, I found a bit of the end of a trilobite. A trilobite. Look at that. It's not from this. It's not. I can tell it's not from the uh, head that I found uh, nearby. But that's cool. That means that there's more in this area. So I gotta be really, really thorough with my search in this area. Just really pick through everything to see if I can find a whole trilobite because that would be pretty cool if I could. And hopefully I do, but I will just keep picking through this area and see what I can find. Third piece of trilobite, second trilobite end. Pulled it just out of this area. Same area where I, uh, same vicinity as the other two pieces, so definitely this area has a decent concentration of trilobites, so I gotta be very vigilant and just look at every little bit and piece. Um, especially the ones that are like dark brown like this, but this is, this is a piece of bracket pot, I can already tell, but I gotta just be very vigilant, turn over every little piece, check every little bit, because hopefully there's a whole one of these. If there's three parts like this, there's gotta be something else, you know? There's gotta be more. Yeah. Like, you never know. I don't know what this is, but I'll have it t take a closer look at that. But you just gotta look. Also, I got something up here that I. It's this piece. So I'm gonna try and dig it out because it seems pretty solid. There we go. It's loose. Giant piece of horn coral. Let's we'll have to wash it off and see if it's complete. If it is, I'll take it home because I don't got too many big ones that are complete. So be a nice little addition. But I'm gonna keep looking in this area, keep scouring it, and hopefully I find a whole trilobite. If I do, I'll definitely show you guys. Just been slowly crawling up. I have just been slowly crawling up, closer and closer to kind of the top of the ledge, and I just spotted this guy. Check this guy out. It's the biggest one I've seen of this species before, and it looks like it's intact. See how the back is. Yeah, that is a very nice, well-preserved, large brachiopod of this species. I believe it's a type of brachiopod, or I might be wrong. Might be some other type of species, but look at that. It's the biggest one I've seen of these here. Definitely a nice find. Definitely a keeper. As I was coming down from the section I was just in, kind of peeked off to the side in this area. And look at what I spotted. Right there. Hopefully it looks, I don't think it is whole, but it might, this might want, this one might be whole. So I'm gonna just carefully kind of pick away at the area. because so it looks like it could be actually curled up. You can see how the segments kind of, I'm just gonna carefully lift it. We're just gonna carefully I think it's not intact, but I'm hoping it is intact. Give me a second and I'll try and see if it is intact or not. Unfortunately, it's not. It's just a partially, partial trilobite end where it like seemed to start it to want to roll over and the rest is missing. Unfortunate, but it's a good sign. I know that they're still here. That's the uh, fifth piece today. And actually, I just spotted this out of my corner of my eye. Look at this brachiopod just sitting there. The tips are a bit rounded off, but not bad. Not a bad find. Well, hopefully, I find that whole trilobite. 
they are definitely here, so I'll keep looking for sure. Because, uh, it seems like there's a decent amount uh, in this area, in this, like, cliffside. So hopefully I can find a whole one. This is kind of fun. Beside the shell of a modern-day grass prod, we have the fossilized shell of one. And it's actually a really good one. Look at that. That's it's a really nice uh, specimen. Pretty intact. I mean, it's a bit cracked and smushed, but it's a pretty nice sized one, actually. One of the bigger ones I found in the Hungry Hollow area. So, I'm quite happy with that. So, I kind of explored that top of the cliffside, and these are the things I found. A bunch of brachiopods, some gastropods, a couple pyrotized, interesting pyrotized things. This one has some pyrotized balls on it. A couple more trilobite pieces. There's a nose of one, I believe. Looks like the nose of one. Interestingly enough, it has a bit of something on the bottom, so I don't think it's just a shed. I think it's actually an, a partial actual trilobite, and then a trilobite butt. But, and also this thing with some an interesting squished piece of shell of something, so I'll have to clean that off and see what that's like. I'm going to try and explore a bit more here, but I think I'm going to head home soon because it's getting quite hot. I mean, of course, I picked a hot day. Why wouldn't I? But this was the uh, only day off that I could come here, so it's whatever. I'm still enjoying it, and I found some cool fossils. Um, and I'll definitely show you guys if I find anything more, and I want to go down there, that little section down there. Just explore that section. As you can see, my hands are uh, shaking from excitement. It's a shame I couldn't have uh, videoed this guy uh, in situ because uh, the heat, the hot weather, plus me taking videos with my phone uh, overheated my phone. Uh, so I've come back to my car and let my phone cool down using the AC just to show you this. Knew it was worth coming out here. Oh. This is a sick roller. Look at that thing. It's huge. Doesn't seem to have any major damage, maybe. I can't fully see what's down here. I can't see if the, all the tail is there. But look at this thing. Holy cow. And all I saw was this, basically. It's just sticking out. Oh, it was worth it. Shame I can record it because my uh, phone was uh, unable to record at the time. But even if you can't get into the pits when they're uh, when you're not here for a club trip, obviously the uh, the sides of the river are still more than good enough. You just have to get lucky. This guy was closer to the top, which makes sense, because the farther they roll, the more damage they get. Oh, I'm so thankful. This is a sick find. Very happy to have finally found a whole one, and a very large-sized one in, in uh, on top of that. At least for here, I think. I've seen bigger, but this is a very decent size for here. I'm quite happy with it. Here are some of the finds cleaned up. We've of course got the horn corals. I'll uh, try and remember to uh, put up the species names if I can figure out which type, of, which species of horn coral it is. Some of them might be hard to ID, so I might not have anything. Here's another one. Pretty interesting, interesting shaped uh, corals. Then I've got one of the uh, kind of chunks or plates I took back. This one has a nice spray of uh, what I believe is bryozoan. Looks like there were multiple. You can see one going this way and there's a bit of, I think that bit there, that's a different fossil or a different bryozoan. You can just see how these are kind of just like plates of like lots of jumbled bits of fossils and stuff, kind of like death plates. I don't know if you call these death plates or you call these something else, but you can just see there's a bunch of different things. There's like bits of coral, there's some crinoid, crinoid stem bits, there's this, I think this is a bit of um, 
bit of uh, gastropod or um, brachiopod. There's this bit of something, which could be like some type of calcite-ish bit of fossil, maybe maybe a trilobite. Trilobites tend to have that color uh, coming from this site, kind of that dark brownie brownie color. But you can see it's just a jumble of um, fossil bits and just interesting stuff. Um, but I, I took this one home because it had a nice chunk of bryozoan on it. I found plenty of brachiopods and some pretty nice ones. This one just, I think, just has a bit of damage there, but it's nicely sitting on the matrix. I'll try and remember to put the species names, of course. Um, from what I know, this is one of the biggest ones of this one. I found this, this species before. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I, in my memory, if my memory serves me correctly, this is probably the largest I've personally seen slash collected. So I was quite happy to find this guy. It was sitting nicely eroded out on the bank. I believe this is of the same species, just smaller, of course. And it's not as crumpled. The uh, bigger guy, if you look back, uh, there the back had kind of been crushed a bit, but it stuck together. Um, um, so it fossilized like that. Here's another brachiopod. I want to say... I, I forget what the name is. It was... Uh, in my head and then I forgot it, but it has partial tips. There, there are some of these brachiopods, like this one, had like these elongated tips, and usually those get worn off, but this one still has its partial tips, so that was pretty interesting to see. And the middle part is pretty nice and intact, so I took this one home. Then we got a bit of an oddity. Uh, button corals can be found uh, in Ar 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 Arcona, but they're kind of uh, rare except for like one spot in the clay pits, which can only be accessed during um, club trips. Um, and I've been to those pits before on club trips, and there's one section where there's a lot of these. And then kind of outside that zone, once in a while you might find a button coral, but usually you don't see them. And this one's actually a pretty decent size, so it was kind of a surprising little find. Not what I was going to expect, but cool nonetheless especially for a button coral this size this is another one of those interesting finds it's just a single section of crinoid calyx so the crinoid calyxes would be these basically these bulbs and then they're comprised of uh, like plate sections and so you get a bunch of these plates all fused it kind of uh, melded together to form kind of like a, a bulbous shaped uh calyx which is kind of like it was like the head of a crinoid and I'll just throw up a picture beside kind of of like an artist rendition of a crinoid so you guys get what I'm talking about for those who don't know what a crinoid is or a crinoid calyx is some gastropods were also found this was one of the better ones but you can see on the back end it's just all gone and missing but the front end is pretty nice but um not too many gastropods, but this was there were a couple, and this was one of the better ones. Now, throughout the day, I had pretty good luck finding lots of bits of tri uh, trilobites. I believe I found this head at the beginning with like this tail section and stuff, and then I found this tail end piece, and then this is part of a head. It's like the uh, this part, the nose part, if you see this head here. It has like this nose section. This is just a flattened nose of one. Um, and I was having good luck, but I wasn't finding any whole ones. And then I was about to leave and my camera, my phone was actually overheating. Like the day was so hot that like my phone stopped recording. And then of course, I found this guy. My first whole uh, trilobite. It's a nice and rolled one, decent size. Um, it's um, Eldragops rana, I believe, is the uh, species. Now, as I'm talking, I'm sure I'll be posting some like before pictures so that you guys can see what it looked like before I got it uh, prepped because I actually sent this guy off to a uh, local fossil prepper to get it cleaned up because there were like certain, like this whole tail section was um, covered in matrix a good portion of the eyes were kind of covered, partially co covered or mostly covered in matrix. And so 
the uh, details on the eyes. You can see all those interesting little um, kind of sections. I forget what the, the um, actual term is. I am not a super experienced fossil collector, so I don't know all the technical terms. Like, I don't know what the name of this nose is, but it, it also had, like, matrix in and then all these, uh, like, these ridges here the inner parts of these ridges between these ridges were all filled in with matrix and those all got cleaned out and you can just see like how amazing this little fossil is and like how well cleaned it is just like look at that face that is so cool like all the bumps and the ridges and the eye cells i think that might be the name and just like the little tiny details like do you see those two um little indents those like kind of line indents i wonder what those are if uh any of you fossil folks uh see what i'm talking about kind of like right there and then right there how there's like these kind of sections where there's these faint lines you can kind of see it better here are those like is that just accidental for this trilobite or is that actually part of like trilobite anatomy that they have those things and just like look at this thing it's it's just mind-blowing how how well this trilobite was preserved like all the indents and the ridges and the bumps and stuff and like the tail section and this plate thing below i don't know if it's a mouth plate or something else or if it's part of the back end but like you can see just like the amount of detail that was preserved on this guy is just mind-blowing and it's just like so amazing like how how awesome this trilobite is and also how awesome the uh, prep job was done. I'll actually uh, make sure to uh, post uh, the details of this uh, fossil prepper uh, of Mike's uh, details because um, I think he, he deserves praise and if any of you folks are interested in getting your fossil prepped, if any of you Ontario folks are interested, I definitely would recommend giving him a contact on Facebook because he is he is fairly priced and his work is spectacular like he made this trilobite uh just made this thing look so awesome like his work was spectacular and i'm sure actually as i'm talking right now there's a bit of he actually i had him record the uh cleaning section so there i'm sure you're seeing probably in one of the corners just how he did the work and I feel like at the end of this video I'll put like an unedited um like sped up version um un unedited I guess it's edited it's a sped up version of the cleaning process but you'll get to see a the cleaning process in full I'll uh post that at the end for those who are interested to see how this fossil was prepped but yeah such an awesome little fossil and also just an awesome job done by Mike to just show its amazing features and all the details that were so well preserved over these many years. And I'm just super thankful to have found this awesome little specimen because uh, it'd been three years and I found plenty of trilobite bits and there had been a couple times where it looked like I had a, a whole one. There was even a one time one, one of the smaller trilobite bits that I... Uh, found this trip it looked like it was an unrolled trilobite uh, and it's just its tail was sticking out but it just turned out to be uh, part of the tail and of the trilobite so that was disappointing but then later on in the day I found this guy and I'm very super thankful and happy that I did such a wonderful uh, little specimen to have uh, been found that brings us to the end of this video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please do uh, comment in the comment section below which your favorite fossil was. I, I'm going to take a pretty uh, liberal guess and uh, guess that most or almost all of you or 100% of you guys are going to say this trilobite. I mean, who wouldn't? It's such an awesome specimen. Um, but... Thank you guys for watching. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and like the video. And please, guys, just have a, a good day. And I will see you guys in the next video. 
And please、uh, stick around if you want to enjoy the,、uh, the unadulterated、uh, cleaning、uh, video of this awesome trilobite、uh, fossil. Thank、you